Hello all, and this is going to be a video response review to Nightmare Baller's review of Green Lantern, the movie. Um, he is a huge Green Lantern fan, and uh, so his his take on the movie is, you know, that of a Green Lantern fan. I am not a Green Lantern fan. I think the last Green Lantern story I have ever I read, I'm pretty sure it was Zero Hour. I'm pretty sure. I think that was the last thing I read. So my take will will be a little different. I, when I went and saw this, I went and saw this tonight actually, um, because it is a comic book movie and I do love superheroes and it had enough mixed reviews where I figured I would at least go check it out. I mean, I'll it'd probably end up going seeing Transformers only because you know I'm stupid like that and we'll go and we'll go watch it. Um, so I went and saw this, and so this is this is. I think my review is more of somebody who is not necessarily a Green Lantern fan, but is a comic book fan, kind of what I thought of it. First of all, let me just throw it out right away what my overall feelings of the movie was. I thought the movie was okay. I wouldn't call it necessarily good. I wouldn't say it was bad. I would call it just kind of okay. It had, it had some good moments. It had some bad moments. It had some cheesy moments. It had some some just what the hell is going on moments. had a lot of those, actually. And uh, but I would say it was okay. I'd say the biggest flaw of the movie is not the CG, which I think the CG is CGI is um, pretty good. Um, I think it actually makes sense in the movie and made me actually may, actually I, I was kind of upset that they weren't on Oa more, to be honest. But um, so there will be spoilers in this, just to let you know. So my biggest complaint with the movie really is the story. I, I think that they tried to add way too much to this, particularly for what probably screen time, not counting credits, was maybe maybe an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, yeah, an hour and 45 minute movie. Um, and I think they just tried to pile way too much into that. Now, I have no problem with it being that length. I think, you know, to me, if you can't make a movie in an hour and 30 minutes, you probably shouldn't be making the movie. So, and so, and I, I think a movie like this, that's about the right time that it is, so I have no problem with that. But I do think they tried to cram too much. You had two villains that they really um, didn't do, I don't think, a good enough job of explaining, per se. Um, well, Parallax, they did kind of explain, they did a good job of explaining that. But um, there was, you know, you had. Just you had two villains that I, I just don't think that I, I don't think they spent enough time on the movie on either of them to explain either of them to really make you care about enough of them to so that it was just kind of like yay they're the villains. Um, there was way too much just trying to just cram stuff in there. Uh, just just the, the the stuff that was on there was I just didn't think was very good as far as the story. I mean him going to Oa and then basically saying, I don't want to be a Green Lantern, or I'm not good enough to be a Green Lantern, and then coming back, and then basically doing the whole, oh, well, yeah, I guess I will be a hero story. That's so cliche, and particularly since he's part of this, you know, Green Lantern Corps, and you would think that, you know, what, the, to me, this would make a better story. You spend, like, 30 minutes, the first 30 minutes of the movie, kind of setting up the story. He gets the ring, he goes to Oa, he learns how to be a Green Lantern, and you spend maybe an hour, uh, maybe not an hour, but maybe maybe 45 minutes um, doing that, him learning. You get, you know, some stuff between him and Sinestro kind of setting up what eventually will happen. Um, you you have uh, you have him then, you know, when the, when, the, it's, when the Guardians basically, that's my other thing. Why did the Guardians basically give up on Earth? I mean, the Guardians felt very un-Guardian-like to me in this movie. Um, you know, and, and when they say that they're, you know, they're going to basically let Earth perish so that they can let Sinestro use the Yellow Ring and learn how to use it and teach everybody, and he goes, no, don't do this. Let me go, basically what happened in the movie, let me go to Earth. I think that would have been so much better than what we got, where it was goes to Oa, he learns a little bit, then he leaves. And then he basically learns to kind of be a hero, fights a villain that just kind of, you know, that seems not the real, we know isn't the real villain. 
um, and just seems like a time waster. And then when the real villain shows up, it's just it just didn't come off well at all, in my opinion. And like I said, I thought the movie was okay, but as a as a non Green Lantern fan, it just didn't do anything for me. It really didn't. And um, I, I think they really tried to put too much into this movie instead of to me when you do a comic book movie one of the things that and this is if you go back to the 90s and if you anyone that was probably a fan back then or, or probably the early 90s um when marvel had their really bad movie deals and they had their their movie rights out to companies that are probably never going to make movies um and make good movies out of them anyways most people were kind of like well you know marvel characters probably would never make a good movie anyways because to make a movie and to make, you know, the, the, the idea was, if you make a superhero movie, you need to strip down the he, the story to its basic core and tell that story. Well, DC characters, and this is the strength of DC characters, particularly the, the, the really, the core characters of the DC universe, when you strip those characters down to their core, they're very, it, it's you know, it's very easy to tell a very good story. You saw that with the Donner films with Superman. You saw that with, I mean, the fact that you basically had two extremely different versions of Batman. And in uh, in Burton's Batman, which was still a very stripped down version of Batman, and then you have the Nolan Batman, which is, again is a very stripped down version of Batman. But they're two very different ways of telling the, that story. And it works because they stripped it down. They stripped it down to its kind of its core essence. And the idea back then was it was much easier to do that with DC than it was with Marvel. And I think that one of the things that they really failed to do in this movie is really strip down Green Lantern down to kind of its core. They they basically told the the, the idea behind it seems from a marketing standpoint of the movie was we're gonna tell a story. That if then if people leave the movie theater and go and want and want to read the Green Lantern comics of today, they'll be able to pick them up and kind of know what's going on because they're so kind of different from what happened before. And I think the problem with that is that yeah, it just it, it doesn't work in the sense of a movie. Now they apparently are going to do a, a sequel of this already, which is good. I mean DC really DC and Warner Brothers really you know this was an important movie to them um, it hasn't done everything that they wanted but I but apparently they're not going to give up on it so I guess that's good uh, but yeah that would be my biggest thing I think they put they tried to do too much with this movie I don't think that I think they tried to make the story a bit more a bit too complicated I think they need to strip it down a little bit more to just kind of you know uh, so that it was more basic story is what I, I really think it was missing and I think you had too much going on I was trying to tell too much trying to introduce too many characters I mean you had Amanda Waller show up and it was just like Amanda Waller wow so she shows up and it's like oh who's that oh, it's Amanda Waller and you're thinking oh we're, we're gonna get you know Amanda Waller being Amanda and it's not even like that I mean it's 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 it is just nothing in me in the movie not that it didn't work but it was just everything was just very much I don't want to say it let down but it was very flat I felt so that's kind of my feeling of the movie I know a lot of people probably wouldn't agree with that but just kind of the way I see it um, it's okay I, I would say it's definitely a rental if, if you're a comic book fan it's probably kind of at least worth seeing um, I didn't see it in 3d but I would imagine seeing that movie in 3d would probably be something kind of cool to see and I'm not the biggest fan of, of 3d but there are movies that you can see 3d I will say this for as much as this movie costs to make it sure didn't look like it. I mean, if for for all of the crap that the Transformers movie will probably get because it's a Michael Bay film right off the bat, and you know, it's 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 a you know, it's a Michael Bay film, so it's it's a lot of flash and no substance. But Michael Bay films at least look like they cost what you know they cost to make. They look like they, as far as visuals, they look good for the most part. It's, you know, usually the story that's kind of lacking, but, or usually lacking, but <clears throat> anyways, um, and it was really missing that. There wasn't a lot of, you know, what you would have hoped for in a superhero movie where you didn't get a lot of those wow and awe-inspiring moments that I think you need in a superhero movie. So this movie was just missing a lot of stuff on top of the fact there was just so much stuff going on and you really, and there was really just 
no time because there was so much stuff going on to really care about the characters. And then the whole thing at the end with Sinestro made, if, if you watch the movie, made no sense. It made no sense. Yes, it's Sinestro turning into Sinestro, but there was no really lead up. There was maybe, what, like two lines <coughs> that led up to that. And then by the end of the movie, you're like, oh, well, you know, how convinced him not to go down this, down this road. And then he just goes down the road anyways, and you have no lead up of why. So that was kind of a shame. I, I really think Sinestro should have been the villain in this movie anyways, um, myself. But yeah, that's beside the point. Um, but anyways, that's kind of my thoughts on this movie. It's okay. Um, I, I wouldn't say it was good. I definitely think it's it's somewhat of a disappointment, I would say, but I, I wouldn't say it's a horrible movie. It's definitely not the worst. It's not like Electra Bad. Um, I, I would say it's it's it probably somewhere between, in my opinion, um, well, I would I would put it on par if you've seen the Daredevil's elect the Daredevil director's cut which I think is so much better than the actual movie. Um, I would put it on par with that myself, and I know not everyone likes that, but um, that, that's kind of where I would put it. Maybe maybe, maybe a little bit better than Spider-Man 3 because it doesn't have that stupid dance segment. But um, uh, but anyways, uh, but yeah, that's my thoughts on the movie. And, uh, you know, check out... You want If you want a fan's review, I, like I said, I'm going to do this as a video response to uh, Nightmare Baller comic channel where he did a video about this so check that out too so anyways with that i'm out have a good one later